So after the events of last video, we learned all about Taro Sakamoto and how despite being out of shape, he is far from falling out of grace and losing his title as world's greatest hitman. We were also introduced to the Sakamoto family rules and Aoi, Sakamoto's wife's strict no unaliving policy. After multiple events unfolded in the normally quiet neighborhood Sakamoto's convenience finds itself in, the Sakamoto family also grew in size by two, with its newest members, Shin Azakura and Lu Zhao Tang. Shin, a low-level ex-assassin with supernatural clairvoyant powers that allow him to read minds, and Lu, the daughter of a Chinese triad family that was Itachi Uchiha in the last arc. Both Shin and Lu were faced with dangerous trials that tested their character, but each of them ended up in one way or another crossing paths with Mr. Sakamoto. The two of them choosing to take a job at Sakamoto's convenience and work to pay back the man who basically gave them a second chance at life. And in this arc, they definitely each have their chances to prove their dedication to Sakamoto and his family. But more on that later. More importantly, one thing that's harped on throughout this entire arc is despite Shin and Lu's almost immediate kinship with Mr. Sakamoto, they kind of can't stand each other. Lu shows up late all the time, Shin, the mind reader, is completely invasive, the two of them are polar opposites, and it honestly creates a hostile work environment between the family. Sure hope that won't cause any issues down the line. Anyway, Sakamoto Days starts as a small story in an uninteresting town. While average hijinks are what we're used to, we just recently took on our first threat last arc, and Sakamoto dropped a fridge on that guy. There have always been whispers of a more dangerous underworld of assassins lying in wait, the exact environment Sakamoto tried to escape when he started his family, since Sakamoto stepped out of line to rescue both Shin and Lu, it seems that very underworld has taken these transgressions as Sakamoto coming out of retirement. The ripples made by Sakamoto and his new family have already reached far and wide, spreading to ears of old friends and old enemies. Here to introduce us to this underworld is a brand new character, a shapeshifter assassin with supernatural powers like Shin. After infiltrating the convenience store quite easily, and frankly, showing just how f they all are if Sakamoto just decides to take a day off, we get to meet another one of Sakamoto's former co-workers, a hitman from the shadowy organization Sakamoto used to be a part of, known only as The Order. The man's name is Nagumo, an absolute enigma, fitting for someone who can literally change how they look. Nagumo is a casual liar and someone who seems to have no real sense of danger. He just came by to poke fun though. He actually doesn't mean any harm. Nagumo's only here to say goodbye. Like a bomb, he drops the news that Taro Sakamoto has a 1 billion yen bounty placed on his head. The proof is in the pizza. No, like, actually, his pizza guy turns out to be one of the hired assassins and tries to take Nagumo hostage. It's here we learn three things. One, this pizza guy was just the beginning, and he was only an amateur. Once word of the hit spreads further, even higher level assassins are gonna start hunting Sakamoto down. Two, despite being massively powerful and frankly polite enough to let Shin and Lu really think this rope was doing anything against him, Nagumo and the Order truly do mean us no harm, for now at least. But they're not exactly gonna help us out either. And three, despite just being an offhanded joke, Nagumo does raise a brilliant point during their conversation. Does Sakamoto really think he's going to be able to fight the assassins at the top with such a ridiculous rule like a no killing clause? A reasonable question especially from someone who just waltzed in and definitely could have created much more of a problem on his own if he really wanted to. As Nagumo makes his leave, the Sakamoto family is left to digest that hard news, making one final attempt to threaten the hitmen that are coming after him. If you continue to come after me, get ready to see hell. If what Nagumo said was true, it would probably be best if the whole family laid low for a while, trying to uncover where this hit originated from and hiding. Just play along with family routine, and Aoi and Hannah don't even have to know or worry. Perfect time to find out, we have a whole ass trip to the wide open and very public amusement park with the entire fam and child tomorrow. Wonderful. No matter how much fun and joy that appear on his wife and daughter's faces, Sakamoto cannot help but be on edge. What a terrible time for his entire family to be out in the open. Even though there should be a great moment to enjoy with his daughter, how can you focus when you have a giant target on your back? However, this is where Shin and Lu, his humble employees, come in. One of the best things about the Sugar Park arc is how regardless of their differences, both Shin and Lu are able to set them aside, focusing on keeping the day running smoothly and safe for everyone. Shin using his 
clairvoyance to read the minds of anyone who enters a 20 meter radius, and Lou able to distract Hana and hide the dispatched hitmen after their failed attempts. Even as those higher level assassins begin to rear their heads, the newest members of the Sakamoto family are more than willing to put their lives on the line for their new friends. Ending up on a roller coaster ride with one of those stronger enemies, after bullets are fired into Sakamoto's convenient ass bulletproof glasses, Shin sees no choice but to release his safety bar and use the upcoming loop-de-loop -loop for his chance to pounce on the enemy. It's here where I want to get off topic a bit and discuss why Sakamoto Days is truly such a gem. The greatest shit this manga has to offer is the fucking choreography. I cannot stroke Sakamoto Days off more for its fight scenes. Quite frankly, battles of such level quality put this series above a lot of other parallel running series in Jump right now. Just this small scuffle alone between Shin and some random NPC assassin can hold so much gravity, even being such a low stakes tutorial level battle. Author Yuto Suzuki accomplishes this by making the environment around the characters feel a part of every fight. After yoinking his enemy out of his seat and onto the track, the roller coaster almost runs Shin over on its way back around. It's the reason the Toxin Assassin is able to catch Shin off guard and graze him with a poison dagger, nearly blinding him, and it's also able to give Shin an advantage when it comes back around the second time, letting him jump onto the back of the seat and use the speed to propel himself forward and charge the enemy. They're then thrown off into a stage show somewhere else else in the carnival, not neglecting a single aspect of the environment this fight takes place in. It's impossible to ignore the masterpieces that are Yuto Suzuki's fight designs and concepts. The different ways, locations, and even weapons are used keep every battle unpredictable and very cool to look at. I could make an entire video on Sakamoto Day's fight choreography, but I digress. Before Shin and Hitman 46 are derailed from the coaster, Tokishiku Assassin touched on something he caught when he looked into Sakamoto's eyes. He noticed fear. More specifically, he saw the fear of death inside his eyes. To a cold-hearted assassin like him, it appears Sakamoto has already lost, if that's the case. If you're not afraid to lose it all, you'll make mistakes, never again reaching your peak. But the beautiful moment here is looking at this from Shin's perspective. Having an opportunity to look back at everything Shin once was. A man who almost shit his pants from having a nice home-cooked meal and couldn't understand why Sakamoto would give up being the best for such a simple life either. Now having seen things from the other side, what having a great family and love in your heart can do for someone. With a forever changed outlook on life, Shin calls the poison enemy a dumbass, essentially staring his previous life in the face and cursing it. As Shin prepares to go to war with the toxin assassin, he confirms his newfound beliefs. People who fight with something to lose are always stronger, which Shin proves in this very fight, stepping out of backstage inside a bunny suit to hide his identity with even stronger resolve. Shin claims he can see much better now. His enemy is confused. Shin should still be blinded by poison, but he catches that fist pretty damn accurately though. Somehow, even trying to fight this blind bunny with a knife advantage, he is getting completely worked by Shin. This time, Shin isn't just fighting under orders. He's fighting because he wants to, because he has something to protect. Right before the Poison Assassin's defeat, with one last knife slash, a clean cut on Shin's costume reveals his eyes were closed the whole time. The entire fight, Shin was blinded by the poison, just like the assassin thought. But what he didn't count on was Mr. Sakamoto being in the crowd, feeding every single move to Shin from afar with his clairvoyance. Like I said before, putting his full trust and life in Sakamoto's hands to accomplish victory and protect what matters most, family. After capturing the assassin, Lou, reminding everyone that she is former Triad, stabs the man with his own poison dagger and threatens to spill every drop of the antidote until he talks. Scary. We find out an organization named Don Denkai Limited is who initially put the request out for jobs on Sakamoto. But Poison Assassin doesn't have any loyalty to the company. He's just a paid mercenary for hire. Here is the perfect time to explain the JAA, otherwise known as the Japanese Association of Assassins. A professional organization of hitmen requiring an official license and certification. All hit requests placed on the black market are streamlined through the JAA and divvied out to appropriate members. It 
it's basically how the assassin underworld is able to moderate crime efficiently and keep radicals from going rogue. You also get this cool membership card, but unfortunately, the day of fun isn't over yet. As the toxin assassin attempts to make his leave, two newer assassins arrive on the scene and take his place, both sporting a much higher power level than before based on how easily they dispatch Poison Boy. Apparently responsible for slaughtering over 200 people at an event called the Ron Rico incident. Now on the case are the number one duo of the entire Dondenkai, Ant and Boiled. Both insanely powerful assassins, Ant is an older woman known for enjoying the thrill of fighting and easily falling for other strong brawlers like herself. Whereas Boiled, a much more hardened and melodramatic assassin, is another co-worker from Sakamoto's past who was looking to take revenge for what Sakamoto did to him. Growing up with Sakamoto in the early assassin school days has beef with Sakamoto and plans to go, as he calls it, hard boiled on him. Back in their teenage years, Boiled was actually Sakamoto Sr. The naturally talkative, overdramatic, and self-centered man took a liking to Sakamoto because of his reputation as being a strong guy. Much like Boiled himself, Sakamoto was hard boiled. Thinking they had a lot in common, Boiled would follow Sakamoto around and act as if they were cool and aloof together. But he came to find out Sakamoto never even knew this fucking guy existed and that's embarrassing. Since that day, Boiled has felt betrayed, thinking Sakamoto was a big fat phony. So he has since sworn vengeance. Meanwhile, Sakamoto and fam decided to end their day at Sugar Park with the haunted house. But because of the zombie theme and overall dark atmosphere, it's easy for assassins to sneak up on them, despite Shin and Sakamoto doing their best to keep them at bay. I would say that Lou is helping, but she's too busy getting absolutely wasted to numb her fear of haunted houses you know, so she can help out. After fearlessly whipping open a door to another herd of zombies, the mass confusion leaves the perfect opening for both Boiled and Ants to make their moves. Boiled delivers a massive sucker punch to Mr. Sakamoto, while Ants distracts Shin and Lu. Sakamoto quickly counters though, reopening the scar on Boiled's face. If it wasn't about him earlier, it definitely is now. The two get ready to square off, but on the other side of the situation, as Shin comes under threat, a drunken Lu launches her foot right into Ant's face. And as the stage is set for that one-on-one, -on -one, finally, Lu Zhao Tang is given her moment to shine and show her will to fight for the Sakamoto family. As the two battles get underway, Boiled tries to hide his tears at the fact Sakamoto still doesn't remember him. Despite the fact that Boiled is an opponent Sakamoto could have easily smoked in his prime. Not only is Rust getting in the way, but Boiled has grown in the last five years to become a large problem. His entire fighting style revolving around the use of small bombs and a dynamite fist gauntlet. Sakamoto was a fool to think the assassin world would stay stagnant in his absence. Boiled continues impressively using his weapons to overwhelm Sakamoto, even if he is super corny about it. The desire to protect his family not being enough, Sakamoto truly has lost his edge, and this battle against Boiled proves it. Once being someone that Boiled looked up to and idolized, Sakamoto now can't even land a single attack on him. How is he supposed to protect his family if he's so quote-unquote half-assed? With Mr. Sakamoto seemingly defeated, Boiled lights up his mission-accomplished cigarette. But suddenly, a familiar presence shifts the momentum in the air. A murderous intent puts pressure on Boiled as he hears the entire composition of his bomb technique read out loud to him from behind. As memories come Come rushing back and that rust starts shaking off. Taro Sakamoto, having shed all his weight like before, has returned to prime form. Turns out Sakamoto does remember Boiled, but it also turns out Sakamoto isn't going to be holding back anymore either. Once again, we're shown this interesting transformation that allows Sakamoto to temporarily regain his peak strength. It's also been established that Sakamoto himself isn't even quite sure what it is or where it comes from. However, in crucial moments like like this, where Sakamoto truly needs to give the fight everything he has, Taro Sakamoto, for some reason, can dip back into this power and return to tip-top shape in order to save those closest to him. But I'll talk more about this later on. As Boiled and Sakamoto get serious, Lou is doing her best with her drunken fist style to keep Ant's attention on her. But the downsides of the drunken fist are, well, you're fucking drunk. She just shakes her head so much she has to projectile afterwards. Ants, feeling like if it's gonna be this 
this easy, she might as well take her time and play with her food. So while Lou is sick on the ground, Ants has Shin tied up to a table, and a man with a chainsaw threatens to cut him in half. Yes, that did escalate quickly. The rules of Ants' little game are as follows. If Lou can't manage to have an attack make contact every 10 seconds, then her henchmen will cut Shin in two. But this morbid-ass game can't really have much of an impact when this drunk bitch is on the floor crying about not being able to help. All jokes aside, as Lou's drunken fist style switches emotions from confident to sad to jolly to angry, she does begin to hold her own in this fight. But what is truly remarkable, even when wasted beyond belief, as Ants commands her that the two of them fight to the death, Lou proudly declines. That's against her family rules, and the people that she's fighting to protect right now, all of them, including Shin, are her family. Blood relation or not, the mundane joys they share each and every day are the strings that bind them together. With that kind of strength behind your punches, how could you lose? Cutting back to Sakamoto and Boiled, now that Sakamoto is ready to fight for real after his transformation, things immediately begin to heat up. With amplified speed and attack power, in just one punch, Sakamoto is able to pack more strength than all of Boiled's bombs put together, cracking this man through the wall. It's Boiled this time that's getting perception blitzed. As his consciousness begins to fade, their power levels have once again grown apart to such a degree, Boiled can't help but acknowledge he was wrong about Sakamoto. Literally catching Boiled's bombs between his fingers, Sakamoto then uses them to create an explosive punch to the jaw. Boiled wonders to himself how Sakamoto could still be this strong after all these years of retirement. And Sakamoto, who finally is acknowledging Boiled's existence, offers him the exact same lesson Shin explained in his earlier scrap. Nothing can stop the power of someone that's using it to protect their family. After crash landing into a Ferris wheel from the massive attack, Boiled barely hanging on to any signs of life and finally being noticed by his senpai stands corrected. Sakamoto truly is, and always was, hard boiled. Having made amends with Boiled and Lou and Ants gaining mutual respect as well, the beaten and bloodied Sakamoto makes his way back to his family that, conveniently, was sleeping this entire time. Boiled declares out loud for everyone to hear his promise to stop making any assassination attempts on Sakamoto's life right in front of his wife. Yep, all that work to keep everything hidden for nothing. Boiled ruined it right at the end. All three of them are sat down at the table like it's fucking grade school, and Aoi demands to know absolutely everything about the Dondenkai hit immediately. No more secrets. With this full explanation though, the worst news that we feared is confirmed. Even though Boiled and Ants won't be bothering Sakamoto anymore, they don't have any power in stopping Dondenkai from hiring anyone else. Aoi doesn't want to hear any of this nonsense though. Sakamoto is just going to have to take care of the problem, and that that's that. And with that subtle exchange of looks, a telepathic message formed out of a long and healthy relationship that Mr. Sakamoto and his wife share, Taro knows exactly what Aoi means by take care of it. Sakamoto was just given full permission to get the bounty lifted. And by permission, I mean committing a full-scale assault on Dondenkai's main headquarters. After a thrilling day at the amusement park, with a new mission to confront the Dondenkai organization head-on, the story of Sakamoto days is only just beginning to unravel. With both Shin and Lu having their chance to prove their devotion to the Sakamoto family rules, while also starting to actually see their new friends as their own kin, risking their lives to ensure not only everyone is kept safe, but both Aoi and Hana, the diamond jewels of the Sakamoto family, are happy, as the hitmen that continue to hunt Sakamoto Sakamoto grow in power. The undeniable fact that was touched on multiple times in this arc is this. Will Sakamoto truly be able to keep his family safe if he is constantly limiting his capabilities? Is this new thin transformation enough power? And just what is this order organization both Sakamoto and Naguma belong to? And what do they want in the long term? After seeing just how powerful Naguma is, it's terrifying to think if one of these guys were to be the assassins coming after Sakamoto. And with the level that everyone is at right now. Is any of that enough? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the Sakamoto Days video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the last video I did on the introduction arc. Leave a like and subscribe to let me know that you want to see the next video for Sakamoto Days in the future, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.